Yeah. Okay. They can see us. Right? So we are ready to start now. Uh, this is welcome to our MedStream 360 on the 20th hour of the day. And uh, from Mount Sinai Medical Center, uh, myself, Dr. Samin Sharma, then Dr. Anpuna Kini on my left side, and Dr. Amit Huda on further left, along with two fellows here, our international fellows, Udit Joshi and Vishal Dulapala. And uh, this is a case which we are going to show with the calcific vessel, but want to show other uh, part of the cath lab, uh, which uh, we have our nurses and uh, technicians and uh, uh, on IVAS uh, imaging, which is Kiski, uh, CVTs are Asif and uh, Hakim, and nurses are Alina and Will. Many of those who have been part of the CVT life uh, have been, and uh, I'm so excited, along with Samir, who probably is uh, smiling, sitting in uh, uh, Miami, although he comes in the morning for our CC live case on Tuesday morning, that 20th hour has gone by. Of course, there are a lot of lessons we learned, but purpose is still remain the same, that unbiased teaching and education to our international community. And uh, this, of course, uh, this first day experience will taught us a lot of things uh, which will change in the near future. With that note, I want to start our case presentation of today. And as we saw uh, in our earlier cases, there is no separate moderator. I will serve as the moderator if we go to the slides. Uh, and uh, Dr. Keeney and uh, Amit Huda, we put operator one and operator two, but there has been a recent change. Uh, Anu has made Amit Huda as the main operator, operator one, but key will be that uh, basically the cases will be done and I will take the questions from audience and will keep everybody engaged, particularly what is being done in this particular case. So this is our Mount Sinai Hospital live case number one of MedStream 360. 68 year old patient who presented with dyspnea and angina. He has a history of PCI to the LED and circumflex and has been progressing aortic stenosis and uh, various risk factors. He did have small CVA, COPD, and uh, basically echo showed severe AS with a high gradient, anything more than uh, uh, 40, 45 and velocity more than four. We call it a high, not severe only, but high and with a value of 0.6. So he came as a part of tower worker, but not ready for it yet. An idea there was that if there is a coronary artery disease, We'll do a PCI and BAV and bring the patient back for the tower procedure later. So what happened is he's done good medical therapy and he had a cath done yesterday which revealed calcific two-vessel disease and uh, uh, just uh, Anu will going to show that. Uh, one of the vessels has been taken care of the LED and now we are going to take care of the RCA. So let's see this now first. So this is the left uh, system angiogram. Left main, you see that is uh, non-obstructive. You have a ramus, OM, circumflex essentially looks okay. So yesterday he had rotation laterectomy uh, no. plus uh, a stent of the LED, which is okay. You do see a small vessel that is uh, way further down. That is the subtotal to total AV continuation, which is a uh, small to moderate size. This is the right coronary artery. And this is a dry cine. Looks like there is a stent, a, a tram track uh, calcium prox mid distal RCA. This is one way of knowing that this is a heavy calcium if there's no uh, imaging in the lab. So this is the kind of case. Point out the aortic valve also. Uh, you can also do just uh, some kind of atherectomy is definitely required. And what kind of atherectomy to be needed, we will discuss. Now, if you see here, uh, even in this uh, film, uh, since you had BAV, you, uh, you do see some movements of the uh, leaflets, which means he'll be okay for another uh, few weeks before we consider this patient needs tower. So that was angiogram with the dye, prox LED, uh, sorry, plus RCA, mid RCA, and more important is just at the uh, you know acute marginal area. That is where it is uh, have, you know significant calcific significant lesion. And of course, you will see uh, the rest of the vessel is non-obstructive, but the AV continuation, uh, so RPL, that is uh, what we said was subtotal, and we are not going to take care of that uh, vessel at this time. 
Now, question comes, uh, play it again, please. Uh, that could it be just that significant lesion of the RCA and making that AV continuation of that RPL slow filling and with the collaterals, or truly there is a, a, looks like there is additional lesion in that um, LPL, but that's a big uh, uh, RPL, big RPL, or could it be just because of the very tight lesion? So we, since many of these patients do not have a functional test, and this is still being debated that the elderly patients, when they show it to you or during time of uh, tower, do you just go with the angiogram and do the intervention or do a physiological testing? As we know, this whole concept of CAD and uh, valve replacement is under like quite uh, intense investigation with a, a complete uh, tower trial ongoing to do a PCI or not PCI after successful CAPN deployment. So in this particular case, since he had no other study and he's a young, relatively young person, I think an 85 year old, you probably don't need a functional, we did a IFR, in aortic patients, because I want to avoid giving adenosine, we did IFR of both LED and RCA, which was positive. Uh, actually, RCA was much more significant, was 0.72. Normal, we know, is 0.89 above, and uh, LED was 0.82. So we took care of the LED yesterday, and in preparation for today's med stream, I thought this will be a great, uh, interesting and teaching case, uh, that right coronary with multiple steps using the atherectomy, then IVL, kind of rotor tripsy, uh, to take it through. So I will leave it now. I'll be on the backside, and I request people that please ans uh, log on and ask questions while the case is being done uh, by uh, Dr. Keeney and Dr. Huda. Now, um, the, that's an interesting question that, uh, you know, why CAD need to be taken care? I think we are, uh, even before this trial is ongoing and questions will be answered, uh, based on our own, you know, past knowledge, we used to say anything above uh, uh, 80, 90 percent need to be intervened before tower, since we are going to be doing uh, uh, heavy pacing, hypotension during tower, and there's a, you know, rare chance that this kind of vessels could uh, occlude at that time. Um, so the question that RPL uh, uh, lesion, you know, I think it's total, so we should not have any problems during tower. He's a young guy in the future, if you have any symptoms, even after tower, he could come back um, and we could take care of that. So I already mentioned that, um, you know, uh, poor man's IVUS, which was a fluoroscopy, which we did. Uh, and we okay. showed that there was significant uh, calcium, but we are trying to get the IVUS catheter. So that was, uh, we wired uh, already with just uh, uh, rota wire, rota floppy wire, and uh, we are having some trouble with the IVUS going forward. You well, see based on this, I predict IVUS will not go. Yeah. So while we are, while you're pushing it, can we finish our presentation? Just one more slide, but we want yeah, to keep that format. Uh, so plan, PCI of the calcific RCA with IVAS guidance with the side rotor trips and DES. Wires, right? And uh, we always want to put this OCK yeah. criteria, one vessel disease, this particular case, two medicine, positive FFR, IFR, appropriate. And lastly, combining all those hard team discussion, STS risk, syntax, uh, and uh, STS score, I frailty, this patient had syntax of 16, and STS score of 6.7. With that note, we can go back to Floro, please. Okay. Yeah. We Were you able to get the IVAS? Yes, okay, yes, wow, very good. Yeah. Go back to Floro now, please, or I was on the main screen. Okay. And uh, one other thing I think we need to discuss, uh, you know, guide selection here. So the IVAS is now just on the plug. So can you go a little more distal or? No, no, that's okay. okay start Whatever has gone, be happy, please. Sure. So let me start pullback. It's coming. Like 360 calcium plus, like 270 calcium. Here's a good lumen. Yeah. Good landing zone. Yeah. We see that like protruding calcium nodule inside. But here's a good lumen, like big vessel, like full low vessel. This, this is, is the tightest part, yeah, calcium nodule protruding inside and a very obstructive lesion. Yeah, here is open, like very tandem lesions. Okay, I think we'll take the IVAS out quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. take it out, yeah. Uh, but so based on this, um, Dr. Sharma, what, what should be the birth size? Okay, I will stop. So that's always a question that always will be asked, what should be the birth size? I think we have uh, the way we teach people that if uh, you have a calcific lesion and you're trying to do wiring. Uh, if you decide that you're going to use an over-the-wire catheter and then wire with a regular workhorse wire, then change to rotor wire. If the over-the-wire catheter of any choice uh, does not go through that lesion, then you have to downsize your bar to 1.25. So here the IVAS went, the over-the-wire catheter went 
I um I know I I it's a very tight yep. lesion, right? Yep. And uh, the diameter you are giving us is 1.5. Yes, I right. think we should do 1.75. Agree. So I think this is uh, particularly lesion is short. So remember, if the lesion is more than 20 millimeter, those are the criteria of uh, adverse uh, uh, for the ROTI score. Uh, this is a, about 10, 12 millimeter lesion, and we can ask our IVAS expert what is the length of it. But Region, but circular calcium is 350 plus degree calcium. I think using a bar and a 3.5 balloon, uh, 20 millimeter, although you have to take care of the proximal segment also, proximal is about 60%. And then in this particular case, uh, knowing it's a large vessel, what is the vessel size? 4.5 or 5? Yeah, actually 5.0. 5 yep. Yeah. It's a large vessel. So knowing that the, our attract me whether it's the orbital or rotational question is in this case you can do orbital also so any one of them we try to avoid orbital in a tortuous segment and aorto osteal lesions otherwise both can be interchangeable and in this case we'll combine it with uh, IVL okay. because large vessel heavy calcium circular look at this full circle calcium yeah. uh, why they're not showing it they should do this uh, I was pleased Full circle, yeah, look yeah. at this, full and circle it's, calcium. It's and she has an irregular yeah. surface, no, like five. Five okay. inside. No, 3520. Yeah. Now, yeah, so, uh, the uh, question is, uh, Amit, you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, Dr. Sharma, uh, I think it would be interesting to know, like, do you always use pacer in this RC atherectomies, or like, is there a subset where you like avoid using a pacer? So that's a very good point. So use of pacer, so we talked about the guide catheter. Then uh, the second important six French guide, AL, is good for good support, AL.75. Then PACER is that it will cause bradycardia asystole. So therefore, either in cases where you cannot put a pacemaker, like many times when we are doing a radial, uh, then we give replace it. We did the trial back in 90s called BARD, B-A-R-D. And basically, we should replace the pacemaker with aminophilin 300 milligram and 1 milligram atropine. And that worked in 90% of cases. It's still about 10% require uh, urgent pacemaker. So key is in this case, if I'm doing radial, I think you can avoid it, give aminophilin, and still have trouble, then you puncture the femoral vein. Yeah. So okay. um, he's going to show the uh, three steps. Yeah. So first one is here, the yeah. knob. I'm going backward, forward. So any tension between the Teflon sheet and the bar is gone. Second yeah. step, between the Y connector and the wire, any tension is gone. And the third on Dyna, we are going to press. See, yeah. it just did not move. So all the tension has been removed. Uh, Maybe you can repeat it to the audience. You repeat those three steps again because they are, and why are you worried about those three steps, uh, Anu? Yeah, so uh, the whole system has uh, uh, three things. One is a wire, second is a Teflon sheet, the Teflon sheet, uh, we have it, is a protection for the burr and also for this rota flush to go through it and then the rota burr. So you have three things. So when we are going inside, there is always a tension between the three things. And if we do not take the tension and we start burring, there's a risk at 150, 160 RPM, the burr can go forward or usually we use our jump, which can cause a tremendous dissection. So are subsequently slow flow, but very rare, but uh, catastrophic complication is a perforation. So we want to avoid that. So by doing, uh, we need to remove the tension. So this is what we did. So the, bar, uh, the knob moving backward forward, Teflon sheet and the burr tension is gone. Y connector here moving backward forward is the burr and the wire is gone. And just to be sure we did a good, we took care of the tension on Dyna, you do the testing. And Dyna, we know, is just between 65 to 70,000 RPM. So any movement that happens, happens at a lower speed. So you will not have any issue inside the vessel. The next important question is, why did we select rotational atherectomy? Why not we go with direct uh, yeah, IVL or why not orbital atherectomy? Uh, yeah, so I mean, again, uh, so this is like those, uh, uh, there are the paper by... Uh, uh, you know, in uh, Jack Asia, that all the majority of the calcific lesion can be taken care of by IVL. And I think the stat statement they made is reasonable, we can do. Only question is, as you know, that you require pre-dilatation, which was done in the disrupt CAD, which is selected cases, and about 55% of cases. And remember, the criteria of the disrupt CAD was 
that patient does not, you think patient does not need rotation atherectomy. But if you think patient need rotational atherectomy, then patients or atherectomy actually they have, I mean lay orbital or rotational, they were not included. So if you think it's a long lesion, you think a very tight lesion, you will need a atherectomy, rotational atherectomy or orbital, they were not included in the, in the uh, IVL trials. Not to say you can do a balloon dilatation of any lesion and get through it. But I think in this kind of tight case where your IVAS has a trouble, although went through, yeah. so you need to make a room for the IVL. So I would say that what rotational atherectomy is doing is basically giving you the path to put the IVL, which could be the, you can call it a final frontier. And secondly, that it will decrease the complication by using a smaller bar rather than going to a bigger one. Okay, so we're going to start rotational atherectomy. Yeah. So we understood, I, this is not a case for IVL, but I think it is a case where we could do orbital atherectomy, right, I mean? That's, yeah, I yeah. totally agree with you, uh, Dr. Kenny. Another thing I wanted to ask you, like when you are doing this complex calcified lesions with rotational, uh, like what are the parameters you are watching on the screen so that you will stop in between or like, or you continue to go in? So, so that's a very interesting point Amit brought up. So before we start, we want to make sure we show the hemodynamic screen. So you're starting here, you see the blood pressure. We always want to make sure the blood pressure. So checking back, we did not cross here because of the aortic stenosis, but our uh, uh, friend and uh, nurse Will, Elena, they always want to know the EDP on the patient. They want to make sure the patients are well hydrated, so blood pressure is maintained. So it's a nice IV line that's going in, and they are ready in the back with the neosinephrine uh, in their hand, so watching for any hemodynamic instability. So what we teach, you will, you are going to show that when you are doing rotational atherectomy, the steps are very, very important. So one, we make sure there is uh, no tension in the bar. The second is how you do it. Okay. So you are going to show them. So uh, pecking motion. So essentially, you have a lesion. You peck. So you go, keep going forward with the rota bar. So you will do the pecking motion. You will watch the speed. The tech is going to tell you the speed and then at 20 seconds we stop. Okay, yeah. so that, uh, that's the way we have uh, done it when, uh, from the very beginning. I think uh, that's how I think Dr. Sharma was involved when the rota came into existence in the 19, uh, early 1990s. 94, 94, yeah. 94. yeah. That's, that's how like uh, Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma explained, you avoid slow flow being happening in these large vessels, which can lead to a lot of uh, issues later on. So start now. speed, uh, sizing and every, uh, like looking at the hemodynamics is of okay, utmost good. importance. So we are starting burring yeah. and then uh, uh, Asif is going to tell me, okay, the numbers, go. So everybody watch his uh, hands, slow packing motion and uh, you are watching the screen also. Take the guide so out. Go. Hmm? Guide is too far in. Yeah. Okay, stop. SS, I think we're okay there because that part is, uh, no. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So now lead. what happens is we already have done probably about 15 uh, millimeter, 20 millimeter. So when he's starting, he's going to go all the way just at that spot and take care of the rest of the lesion. Good. Yes. So we know that tightest part is at that uh, acute angle. Yeah. Okay, pull back and wait, yeah. So now uh, you see, we didn't come all the way back. Um, so we are just where we stop. So we know why this also important is you are giving a breathing, a room for the vessel, a little bit of forward flow. Yeah, keep going. So this is the tightest part. Tell somebody ask question. Nobody asking questions. So but also important is Tell. we got to yeah. when we hear or auditory that when there is a drop in the RPM, it's time for us to stop. Stop. Yeah. And like we as operators, very very important. We pay because you hear a change in the noise when the RPM drops. So if RPM drop of more than five thousand means it is telling you that there is the lesion is tight, the burr is big. So you know, go slow. 
And uh, do you think, Dr. Kinney, if there is a lot of tortuosity or angulation in the vessel, does it make a difference in your choice of atherectomy device? Yes, yes. Uh, so, it depends how the tortuosity, which part, proximal or distal. So, in the proximal, I think you can, you are still okay. You can use a rota floppy Process, wire yeah, that's and it. still probably go with the rota in real tortuous and very distal vessel, maybe orbital atherectomy has a little uh, better uh, um, you know, performance in that uh, situation. But whenever you have calcific tortuous vessel, the teaching is, mm. you know, go slow ready. and uh, take a smaller bar, you know, yep. smaller bar. Yep. Because it always ca causes a gutter. So right now we will do a polishing. We did the whole uh, area. Yeah, go polishing. Give me the... Oh, what do you want? Okay, pull back. All the way back. All the way back. Good. Stop. We are done. So we are coming out. And then uh, the, let's do IVAS. So we understood what this, uh, you know, rota has done. Sure. And so now you can see this one person can do it. I'm coming out. All I'm doing is I'm advancing the wire. I don't have to go to tip 2. It's creating a nice circle by itself. Once it comes out, I will stop. We'll go side by side. Uh, and then regular wire side by side. And then do the IVAS again. Yeah. Three loops. Give me a run through. Any questions uh, so far on the... Yeah, there's no, bot. there have been no questions yet. That means either that you... That means we are doing a great job explaining. Yep, that's absolutely correct. When and there are no questions, they say... <laughs> and uh, always have your balloon ready. That's what the teaching Very of our institution is also there. Mm. That uh, in these kind of high-risk PCIs, you never know. No, tell you him. need a balloon. Him. Yeah. So, we have so like what uh, he's, uh, uh, Amit is saying is have a balloon ready. We had a 3520 ready. No, we... Give a little video dilator, little ST changes as you can yes, see yes. before you go in. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, video dilator, the talk about the rota flush. What is in the rota flush for our audience? Anu. Yeah. So, the rota flush is a half normal cell in bag. If somebody can show it, if the bag is around. Yeah. So, that has uh, the. Yeah, you, we have a heparin 5000, 5 milligrams of varapamil, and then you add the rota glide. So, rota glide has uh, some kind of uh, egg emulsion. So, very important the nurse checks with the patient if they are allergic to eggs. If allergic to egg, egg that uh, rota glide is not added. What is the role of uh, rota glide? How does it help in the procedure? No, rota glide along with the uh, uh, the drip, it essentially helps movement of the rota and decreases uh, this kind of. Uh, uh, now you asked whether why we have heparin to prevent any kind of uh, slow flow as well as varapamil because the, we think there'll be heat generation. So yeah. This thing helps in prevention of heat generation. So heat generation can do two things: cause more vessel spasm. So all these things. Uh, help prevention of that. Yeah. And that's a very important point. If I, somebody asks me, what is the Achilles heel of rotation attract me? And that is the generation of heat. And I think the heat is the troublesome. Let's put an echo now. I mean, I was... Can I start back? This is just before the distal RC verification. It's coming. Yeah, lumen is open. Yeah, here's a good landing zone. Like five or vessel. It's coming back. Yeah, here's a distal region. And once open, and now coming the tightest wow. part. It has created a nice... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Got this was the cuts. tightest part nodule. Yeah, we have laid it. Yeah, it's a tandem lesion. Once open. I think the goal for us is having done this many imaging and so, so, so many calcific uh, yep. that we yep. should use. There's also that I see the ablated calcite plaque. Deep learning to understand and uh, have an algorithm. Also an audio. Right? Hmm. Based on imaging, a good who should get what kind zone. of a 
treatment therapy. Agree? Yeah. Okay, very important question, yes. uh, which uh, everybody is interested in nowadays. Mm -hmm. How do you differentiate between calcific nodule and uh, thrombus on IVS? Calcific nodule that. versus thrombus. So I'll show you the tightest part. So this is like almost 360 calcium. And if you see like four to five o'clock, this is an irregular surface and an acoustic shadow. This is protruding inside. This is a calcified nodule. But it looks like much better because we ablated by 1.75 bar. Okay. But still there's 360 calcium. So then we need to know uh, the next step. So we do IVL or just a balloon. So by IVS, it's hard to see the deep fl uh, fracture. Yep. Yeah, we just found a much better lumen compared to the puri. And cut in the lumen. So, uh, uh, Amit, uh, what do you think now? Do high pressure, cutting balloon, or IVL? You have all the choices. Uh, I think we should uh, optimize it more with the IVL, given Beautiful. the large vessel size, because Bar has made a passage for the IVL balloon to go in, and our balloon may not be enough. Perfect. Actually, a lot of questions finally came. I think I didn't re refresh it. This question from Argentina and others that how you decide the rota bar size. Uh, I know Anu made yeah, the yeah. point. If nothing crosses, we go 1.25. But what is about 1.5, 1.75 for 2 all? Anu, you want to comment on yeah, it? Yeah. So I think if you are using imaging, right? So I did ask Keith what was the tie test. Tie test was 1.5. So yeah, and it was short length. So it's okay. You can go 1.5 or 175. We opted for 175 here. So if you are done imaging, if you did not do imaging, um, then how do you go for bar size? In this day and age, uh, remember once upon a time we used to do step bar approach where you will go 125, 15, 20. But um, the so called large bar, I think we don't need uh, like we do now, which is uh, becoming a common, uh, I'm going to take the other wire, right? Yeah, okay. The common myth is that you can do one bar, so 15, 175 bar. And then since Amit mentioned also that it's a large vessel that you just go with the IVL, do adjunct. Uh, um, more modification with a different kind of a uh, um, technology. So here, how does um, how will IVL work? So you know the way the rotational atherectomy work we showed that is differential cutting. Um, you have calcium, so the, the bar goes and just takes care of the calcium, uh, deflects the so-called uh, um, elast elastic uh, tissue. But then IVL has a uh, different kind of waves that are sound waves that will break. So what happens in a larger vessel instead of going a bigger Keep bar, going. you did, you already took Four. care of the calcium little bit nodule, which you did. And now you, we go with IVL. You see that you do still see a dent there, right? Hold on. Let me pull back. Okay. You're doing it. Okay. Yeah. Good. With a sound wave, it will go deeper and take care of the deeper calcium now. So there is a one question is no. that for deciding for IVL, what IVS would have been better or which we did or OCT would have been better? If you ask Kiski, he'll definitely say OCT is better <laughs> since uh, you get the depth, right? Okay. Yeah, and depth. all the definitions of, uh, you know, calcium mm -hmm. is all based on OCT study. Yeah. We're not able calcium to... Calcium assessment, of course, yes, OCT assessment is better. Of calcium. We can see yeah. the thickness, but we, when we decided IVS, IVS also can, like, I think, interchangeable. Yes, no, I was at a score also. I was scoring yeah, is also same. A little different, but Six clearly the know. biggest problem with IVAS is you cannot have a depth. That's the biggest limitation of the IVAS, yeah. as you know. That uh, that, show them. Our rage, so IVAS rage yes. would not go beyond, yeah. And okay. the other question was, I mean, off we talked about it, 300 milligram IV before, along with atropine to give it. And the uh, question is, nitroglycerin versus nitroproside between atherectomy runs. Um, I think that is an operator choice, but um, we prefer nitroglycerin first. And if still there is a slow flow, you can leave uh, at six. I want to show them. So initially there was a dent, and now after giving three runs, look at it, beautiful, yep. nicely opened. Yep. And the other co and very so important the question: things, yeah. either nitro, verapamil, nipride. Some people even like uh, you know I see adenosine also, but I think it depends on operator choice. Anything would be okay. But and now nipride always causes lots, a lot of hypotension. So if you have really bad slow flow and there's a hypotension, nipride may not be a good choice. So at that situation, um, you may want to consider you know, taking care of the hypotension quickly with the balloon pump and then use a twin pass. So you go away distal and uh, infuse these uh, other things. Yeah, right? You want to go there? there? Yeah. yeah. 
you have to do still proximally your guide is quite a bit in so one very important question uh, is that which case knowing that you started with 150000 rpm mm. which situation would you increase the speed so that's a very important point let's go how will you go for the bigger speed when uh, this was a short lesion suppose you have a long lesion i'm talking 20 30 millimeter lesion so you have done maybe half of the lesion and then there is a certain point where you think you still cannot the bar is still not making movements further this is the time you decide that do i go high speed of the same bar or do i downsize the bar so you done already i would say half the lesion of a long lesion you are hitting lot of resistance means that there is that's the time you can decide i would go uh, bigger size bar but oh, normal teaching is that if you think you have a 1.5 bar and it still did not do the job you did not uh, able uh, you are not able to ablate the entire length we always go say downsize so you will go downsize the bar and when you go downsize and you are still not able to finish the ablation then you go higher speed now what's a higher speed we have 150 160 we would say go 170 very rarely with the you know operators who have had a lot of experience we can go higher than that but you definitely need a lot of experience before you think you really want to go very high uh, uh, speed yeah just to say that uh, the the speed of 140 150 is based on a lot of data actually i did 1998 the experiment with Dr. Barry Kohler with one of my fellow Marlin William, we found 140,000 RPM as a least platelet aggregation and activation. And the sec therefore, we try to use a smaller bar. Uh, I mean, a smaller speed, but yes, sometimes you can go to higher. But at the same time, I also have to say, knowing the literature, there is only one randomized trial done in Japan, 100 patients. When we compare 140,000 RPM to 180,000 RPM, primary endpoint was slow flow, CK release was no different. But this is our feeling that a smaller bar, I mean, smaller speed does cause tolerated with the patients better, less perforation, and that is what we have been uh, using it, but not uh, based on any randomized, but our own data. Uh, there was another question was cutting balloon. So question we had talked about our rota and IVL, which situation would you use a cutting balloon? I can answer, I can take that question, uh, very important, uh, is very simple. Because the after like this particular case, large vessel, you have to use some adjunct device. Cutting balloon, will it do good job? Just like the, the IVL or high pressure or super high pressure of the ovian. So this actually, the field is under investigation, I would say. We have completed a trial called Rota Cut. 60 patients where we went with the high pressure balloon versus uh, uh, the cutting balloon and primary endpoint is the I was imaging endpoint of the minimum stent area. So I would say I'll re keep this question till that time that if there is a choice, uh, IVL, uh, I would go with IVL and uh, rather than just doing the uh, cutting balloon uh, in such a heavily calcified lesion. Coming from this RCA, this is a good landing zone, like five o vessel, the lumens follow. Uh, so coming. other thing yeah. also, uh, this was 360 degree calcium yeah. here. Yeah. Region, so when open, you have 360 degree calcium, like Amit mentioned, I think uh, it's better you go with the adjunct IVL. Yeah, now coming to the tightest part, it's much uh, better Sharma. lumen. Uh, do you think yeah, that's that the fracture? Much better lumen. Okay, it's looking quite lean. good. Yeah. Here's an eccentric calcium, but much better lumen compared to pulley. This was a calcium ovulated by lumen. This is the area. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We took care of it. Very good job. Now come okay. to the fox lump part. Yeah, good landing zone. Yeah, okay, I will stop good. here. Oh, okay, Amit, you have some question, and I have a few more questions yeah, here. Yeah, like for the uh, education purpose, I wanted to ask like. Do you think superficial or deep calcium makes a change in your like planning for the case? Yeah, I mean, majority being a deep calcium, which we know I was actually will help you. In case you want to avoid rotation threat me and your superficial calcium, you can just go with the high ball pressure balloon dilatation and so. So that's the question was also that how many times do you perform IVL? Or how do you determine the indicators of adequate calcium modification on IVL? Uh, no. So, um, let's go back to where the tightest area was uh, on the IVAS. The, uh, this is the... So, two things. One is fluoroscopy, other one is on uh, imaging. So, in fluoroscopy, we already showed 
that um, we started, this was a 3.5. One thing is for sure, I think before we do IVL, as far as imaging, you should do imaging. Uh, we don't have that, right? No, you have it. No. Gradually no. increasing, yeah. Uh, the balloon inflated. Yeah, I think I had it okay. covered. Okay, sorry. No. That's the one. No. You no, want no, it? No. Yeah. Oh. We had it somewhere. You see here? Yeah. So you did see, there was another one uh, we uh, seen it where there was, uh, you see a uh, dog bone and then at four atmosphere, then you go at six atmosphere, you see that uh, uh, area is completely expanded. So if you see, so we did three runs here, three, look at it. Yeah. So that's angiography where we know that IVL has uh, done a great job there. Now we go to imaging. Kiski, so where was that? Uh, that was the tightest area. And uh, so like looks like the six o'clock to the eleven o'clock. This is the ovulated calcium. Uh, and I go to the one second. What you see that the you see a plate, a plate of calcium, and you see a crack through that. Yeah. You see a crack through that. Yeah. Here the yes. seven o'clock looks like yeah, the seven o'clock and also at uh, eleven o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see something like that, IVLD has done a great job. This is so a it's time to stent it now. Yep. I am. You know what? That's a very good answer. But I have. I have a little different one. Knowing in this day and age mm. of AI, why can't the IVS people or OCT people cannot come with an algorithm that after you're done imaging, or oh, sorry, after you're done thoracotomy or whatever, you do the imaging and they tell you you are done. Go with the stent or do some additional modification. I think we were waiting for some kind of a algorithm. I mean, of that course, algorithm we'll... will be done here in Mount Sinai. That's it. Good. That is it. So another very good AI question. AI person is right here who yeah. will tell you in the future when and what to do. So okay. that's the, because we are we are the lab that have been doing rotational atherectomy and all kind of atherectomy for over twenty years. Now that's the experience. So you need lot of cases with angiogram. You need lot of cases with imaging. Then you need to tell this uh, so-called the machine how exactly things have to happen, uh, and that's how you build the algorithm. I mean, just like the OCT has after your stent is placed, that is fully expanded. What is uh, will give you red dots? Now, very important question. I know this is for you. No, you love this one. One second, one second yeah. before we go proceed. So we will go with the three five four zero. Four zero four zero forty eight. Okay, 4048 uh, yeah, synergy. synergy. So, yeah, follow is safer. Okay, okay. Now, question very important uh, and it's a little uh, tricky also. Uh, or which cases do you consider rotablation by radial approach or femoral for all rotals? This is a question by Dr. Jones, uh, Dr. Who? Jose Escalante. Yeah, so I can tell you a lot of questions from Argentina. They're <laughs> thanking us that we are answering their uh, all the questions. Good. We, uh, we so, welcome uh, our uh, the audience from Argentina. Yeah, question is radial versus femoral. Knowing that there are the data, mm -hmm. that the radial uh, rotablation has a better outcome compared to femoral. A study from National BCIS Registry of uh, UK. Uh, but uh, I will just leave it. No, uh, no I understand. But why, why was the outcome better in the radial? I think I, it, to me, it's an indirect effect of the lower vascular complication. Yeah. So essentially, it's a vascular complication. We know that vascular complication is uh, very low. And um, most of these complex procedures, complex cases, um, okay, go here. Right coronary artery, so did they mention right coronary artery only? No, no, all, 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 all rota, kind all of rota, all rota. No, you have to dilate that area. You did no, only no, IVL. will be okay. It's 48. It's 48 yeah. that's not going. And uh, that's another thing I wanted to also tell you tell is that yeah. many, uh, many yeah. of these cases after IVL and when I've done imaging and we know the cracks are good, we don't need to again dilate with another balloon. Uh, usually it's good. Yeah, see? In, yeah. Yes. A little bit more. Are we good? Yeah, we're deep good. breath. Sometimes yeah. deep breath for the right coronary helps. And uh, and I think our... you saw the hand movements of uh, Amit. Uh, so with the two fingers, he was holding the guide, holding the wire, and same. You have the guide that was nicely sitting there and uh, just gentle movement going forward. So going back to the question, radial versus femoral, I'm very clear. For an <laughs> operator, who does so many cases, you want to do the case swiftly, properly, and quickly. I, that's why I would prefer a femoral epic. Can you do this case radially? 
yes you can do the case radially and same thing i think you become proficient keep doing what you want to do but somehow uh, i am a very big fanatic of uh, radiation to the operators so no matter what you say when you are doing radial you are a few millimeter uh, closer to the patient and the radiation is very high to the operators for a uh, high volume operators and that's why i would not prefer otherwise no difference uh, well, i mean the other that. point could be also mm. i know that uh, the support the clearly we know if you have more complex case we have one of our uh, guy who does 95% uh, uh, radials so patients who need extra support you definitely pull back 2 mm yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, you probably need you get better to go with femoral and the seven French. Mm -hmm. Other issue, you are putting a two stand technique. Mm -hmm. Seven French will be better in that situation. Mm -hmm. So that probably femoral because you, you will know, have a know, lower. What I meant is, as they will argue, do the crush with six French. Yeah. So you know they will have their own argument. But uh, the same thing, you want to finish the case in ten minutes, or you want to do forty five minutes hour of the same you case. Put back two millimeter. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Good. Good. Very good. Well, Massage uh, distal yeah, later, yeah. Yes, Good. So this distal may look yeah. okay. Gop. So the, that that is a uh, very important gop. And um, many times we have seen it, especially when you are doing a circumflex uh, intervention by the radial. Yeah. Go the more. guide always is deep down. Uh, we have seen guide cause proximal uh, RCA dissection. Guide cause proximal circumflex dissection or no support, and there's no way you are able to deliver the strength. And most cases, you end up using stability of the guide by wiring in the LED or using a Godzilla guide liner. This is very common. And another nice note came uh, from uh, Michael Cryer that excellent work, great to see Medstream 360 up and running so well. So, uh, Samir, uh, congratulations to you from others. And the Cat Lab staff and myself have been enjoying the cases here in South Carolina. Wow. Okay. You got a good fan club there. Well, Mike is a one of our old colleagues and he was yeah. trained here. Michael, Dr. Sir, yes. Dr. He's our fellow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's okay. The, putting the name out, raising the Mount Sinai flag, nothing wrong in that. Okay. I, uh, Globally. And geographically, we are done, but do you want to do IVAS? No, no, Floro, let's see. But no, I think I, I would mean, definitely I mean, post direct. There's a lot no. of little things here. No, no, but I'm talking about within at the area of seven. I didn't see the angiogram. Can we see it again? But long, Lee, long extent, you have to post direct little segment. Okay. Yeah. Okay, get us a 430 yeah. you have. You no. 430, no. yeah. You're okay with the distal edge look. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, to angiographically, it's okay. Yeah, that's what yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would leave that's it, fine. not yeah. to go behind. Yeah. So, the very important also, what I think... Uh, Important uh, for uh, people out there is to understand. You know, wait one from, second, one second. From uh, uh, you know, senior senior operators like us, what you can leave and what you should not leave. Good. So this is a good example. That you, this ledge, you see that that's the way it was from before. You see that uh, it's a step down, so no need to go behind it. Just. Leave. I would say, why not in this particular case? Hmm. Knowing that, that you've done all the imaging, you've done uh, rota, IVL, and the stent, why not you just, based on the imaging, you say you are done. Don't post-dilate. Because everybody says you post-dilate. But question is, do you need post-dilatation now? Because it looks so good. It's minus 15% most of the area. If so, Even if the tightest area, your lumen is more than 8 millimeters square, probably you don't need anything. Yep. What do you say, uh, Anu, on that? Hmm. Or you want to post-dilate proximal area? Uh, like nine o'clock, right? Yeah. I so think about nine o'clock. Angiographically, we would have done. Yeah, let, let me do what I would do angiographically yes. and then we confirm it with the uh, IVAS. That's yeah. number one. Meanwhile, uh, we still have 15 minutes. We can start showing our apps. We are done here. Any more questions with regarding the case? Yeah, we'll start app in about five minutes. Not yet. Because we are, people like to see the imaging. Again. Dr. Sharma, can I say one point from the yeah. point of view? Okay, yes. So this is a pre ivs Actually, the vessel size is 4.8, but the tightest part is super eccentric calcium. So it's a high pressure, big balloon is a risk of the perforation of the healthier part. So that's why they're not uh, go the super aggressive, yes, the, I think safer. Okay, okay. He's telling yeah. us don't go atmosphere at uh, 24, 26, be gentle. That's a very uh, good point, especially 
what the point is making is that eccentric calcium so yeah. when you have eccentric calcium not concentric eccentric the one part of the vessel has calcium you go high pressure the opposite wall gives way and you will perforate the vessel so just be gentle okay very we important going, yeah, we sorry. are going here and yeah. i'm going only at 18 atmospheres okay so very good question dr diego padilla asking the question that of the various things which you are doing in this case what is the most defined step in this case and how we should approach it so i would say i'll wait uh, uh, dr kini to answer but from my point of view your calcium at 7 o'clock position was the biggest trouble so one rotation attract me of the 1.5 or 1.75 bar is the most defined step in this particular case anu you want to answer that question yeah the, the i mean the, the, the deciding atherectomy now whether you wanted to do orbital or rota uh, was your choice but you see that without imaging we decided just on fluoroscopy tram track calcium equal to atherectomy so you do atherectomy and then you know additional imaging can help you how to better guide you but the, 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 that was a very important point uh, your guide is too far in guide yeah. has to no, no, out. we pulled it out yeah now want to pull back a little bit yes and you can hear the patient snoring uh, the master my master uh, for treatment by our nursing excellent nursing staff <laughs> the vital patient uh, that you will be in lala land for half hour and after the procedure will bring you back down some people do ask are you sure you are going to bring us down as a guarantee you only half hour ride We're ready <laughs> okay good So okay give the eyes ready nice yep beautiful okay while you are finishing the eyes there last question which we did answer uh, at sinai because of our complexities and the select referral we do of 330 40 cases of pci we do every month rota i mean atherect me done in about 80 patients so around 25% So of the 25%, if you make it 100%, uh, rotation track means 80%. Orbital is 15, and remaining is uh, laser. Uh, laser is an uncrossable lesion or undilated, unexpanded stents. Then we combine these atherectomy techniques almost 40% of the time with IVL on top of it, 40 to 50%. So IVL use of in our lab is about 30 per month. So that's where where we are. We're, could we use more orbital lot of centers use solely orbital nothing wrong in that and most important the major trial eclipse mm. but the 2 2000 patient has completed the enrollment few okay. weeks ago and we'll know by uh, in next year tct or so the final result were compared I orbital was... versus high pressure for before stenting i was on the screen please i was on the screen samir mehta cannot put any comment he's not watching we don't need it's so many good comments He should not be putting. We don't want him. Very good questions. Looking good. Okay. Remember, we said the distal area of the stent. Uh, this is exactly yeah, where we are. Back. Angiographically, we wanted Sorry, to leave it alone. The distal edge looks great. Very expanded. No edge dissection. And the stent is very expanded. This was the tightest spot, but well expanded. Good lumen. Coming to the plug mm -hmm. cell here. Nodules. Yeah, here is a yeah elliptical shape. The lumen is good. Doing the stent. Coming plug small. Yeah, well expanded. It's a long stent. Now even if there is a nodule, but you got a lumen of 8.5 millimeter square, you leave it alone. You don't go after, right? No, no. The question is the type of stent may make may make a difference. Yeah. Yep. Thin strut versus yes. thick strut stent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was so just thin strut, ultra thin strut may not be an answer in this situation. Um, uh, what you near you really need to do is remember the nodule that uh, looks like a little hill ha actually has to be crushed a little bit. You need a thick strut stent to do that. I mean, we went high pressure. Other thing, you if you really concerned, let's see what is MSA coming out to be. that uh, do you go mm, just a 8 mm just there yeah let's see it our second is the what is the role people will ask that uh, ivl post stent deployment it's a 7.75 i think it's yeah, good it's, good yeah. reaching our 
Okay, so with that note, I'm actually so happy that we are 21 questions. Uh, most I have seen uh, because I've been on uh, the our journey of the med stream 8 p.m. Ready? Except that I did not watch from 1:15 to 4 4:30. But have been, and I'm sure Samir is 24 hours watching it. Uh, and an excellent uh, uh, presentation of a very difficult case. And now we'll go through app. Please uh, go to the slides. Okay, SS, look at the, the RPL. Okay, what did I say? <laughs> I said likely RPL. If I asked the fellow yesterday, they were saying total occlusion. I said, nope. I said, ask the fellow yesterday. I said, it is the decreased flow from a subtotal RCA lesion. Yeah. Remember, Richard? I said yesterday, not occluded. They all said occluded. Richard, I said, no. Nope. Richard is missing. So, yeah. total, uh, very important, total no, contrast. All said, was yes, 80, I told them yesterday. Not total occluded. contrast was 80 cc. Air karma, which is 0 0.7. 0 0.7 for a complex case like this. And then the total time was 21 minutes. And the procedure time is just to 51 minutes. Okay, now we got eight minutes. Yeah. Uh, Anu, for your, uh, go to the uh, library on the main screen, please. Uh, show the calcificate. Yeah. Uh, calcific yeah, presentation has been done. You just go to this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was a calcificate. We are uh, up, upgrading. Second generation will be coming out soon, where IVL will be included. This uh, came out years ago when IVL uh, wa was not here on there. So in the, today's case, uh, we did uh, what is called as uh, you select a lesion, non bifurcation lesion, angiographically. If you see the non bifurcations, severe calcium. And of course, we confirmed it uh, with the intracoronary imaging. And based on that, we did what is rotational attractor. So in this app, exactly how rota works, all the steps that we discussed is already there. So differential cutting is the key for rotational atherectomy. Remember that. And that is how the rotational atherectomy um, happened. So the other one is bifurcate 3D. Everybody loves this app, the various bifurcation techniques. So it's a 3D. Uh, demo, you know animation so you can either download the app or what uh, there is what is called as a web app the, the website is cardiologyapps.com where you can go and download all these apps or just uh, you know look at it on the website itself and more important on the red you see there are key videos you see all the important uh, uh, steps of the various bifurcation technique um, uh, in this thing so a lot of uh, imaging is being done, but do we understand what to do when? I know the future will be AI driven uh, algorithm to take care of most of this, uh, you know, complex uh, lesion, whether it is bifurcation, calcium, CTO, left main, it will happen. Uh, soon it's going to happen. But till then, use these videos to understand how OCT image looks like uh, and understand the lesion morphology um, exactly pre post tenting uh, everything is here and there are case uh, reviews uh, quiz for you to understand in this uh, app uh, the other one is uh, very important that we are seeing is patients who have had tower are coming back with some kind of uh, uh, CAD like this guy uh, we did see a, uh, his intervention he's going to get a tower and then if suppose he comes back with further disease or risk stenosis, we should know how to engage the coronaries through this uh, tower valve. So we have what's called a tower cathode with beautiful animation exactly telling you how to engage this uh, tower uh, valves. Yeah, now just to come uh, one second pause that the OCT when you presented, the question one was, are, are all apps free? Answer is yes. All then, these apps are free. But then they're saying, can I ask a question or submit my image to the app? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, uh, there, there is a way you can submit your images. So it, uh, the, the email will come to our team, me, Kiski, Yulia. Uh, somebody will answer you. Not not uh, midnight and uh, 3 a.m. Uh, but you know, you send me electively. We'll give it to you. In, in 24 hours. What about? Do you have an iOS app? Yes, coming up. Okay. Is uh, will be released in two weeks. All right, guys. Then now uh, you have complicated. The complicated. There are 55, 55 cases, over 800 angiograms, discussing all the cath lab complications. What you see, how you prevent it, 
uh, this uh, how to take care of it and how to prevent the future uh, future so everything is there now this does not have an app because it's too many angiograms so you go on the website called complete and you can see all this uh, PCR. and all these cases are from Mount Sinai everything that you see in this app whether it is the bifurcate, the IVAS, the OCT, every case is from Mount Sinai. Keep going. Yeah, all are free. Download it and enjoy them. So this is guide wire, uh, you know, various guide wires that are there, over 135 guide wires. We describe them and more important, we dis CTO, non -CTO, what kind of wire to be used when and where. So that is the guide wire app. And more important, who is coming, will be the MCS for patient uh, who are in shock to take care of the shock patient. But more important, everybody like is a calculator and the value reference. So how to calculate the various numbers and weaning of these uh, weaning parameters, especially for uh, ECMO and impella. Yeah. So this uh, this app helps you there. These are all the apps, the device aid, the website is ready, the devices of the cath lab, every device that starts from the access to closure, that is included there. Balloons, wires, uh, the guides, the stands, you name it, everything is included. So I was aid, you can see there, it's ready to come and updated calcium. No, 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 two weeks. And uh, it's free. And you can download Android as well as in uh, iOS, whatever your phone is. And if you think you don't want to download, go to the website. Uh, but it's easier to download. You have it. And uh, many of them, you don't need active internet connection. Uh, offline also, you can see them. And very uh, more important, the cases and everything you can review. Yes. Okay. Any questions? No. No more. Okay. Right on the hour, we actually have one more minute. Uh, if any other questions are not there from uh, our audience, we are so thankful. Uh, one, as a uh, the producer of the Mess Stream uh, the 360 show with uh, Samir, that uh, dream which was being born in the last three years finally came to fruition. And secondly, that mission of unbiased teaching, that is basically the mission is. And uh, which, uh, from my point of view, it has really come to the solution. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what I think uh, uh, I am going to announce means I know we have been doing a lot of live cases, essentially me doing the procedure, um, and you are the soft, uh, second operator. So with the with the birth with the birth of a 360, <laughs> what we have done is I have moved on. You become the moderator. I am becoming the second operator, and I want this legacy of me as a teacher to continue so here we are we will have amit will be uh, you know doing more and more of these live cases and uh, continue the teaching the, the olympic uh, flag or the you know the, the flame will continue, flame continue that uh, the, the, that we are continue the legacy will continue about the teaching and continue about the legacy we are all ready for the very first case uh, with my associate prakash krishnan uh, and there also i told him maybe he should become the moderator and let the kids do it although they are not kids but from my from my kids in the field point of view this i said uh, like amit that way he's a kid uh, learning the whole uh, the things of uh, uh, our international uh, all round learning doing and then teaching in that so that's what i told uh, pk also but we'll see but he is we are going to uh, analyze all what has been done lot to digest of the 24 hour i think it's not exactly 24 hours 24 cases cases will be about 20 22 uh, uh, cases are, but, but key is that we are going to digest all and come up with a recommendation to make this educational series uh, successful and valuable for people to watch it so they have something uh, in their free time uh, going there having a post dinner uh, evening that's ready to uh, uh, basically get the educational extravaganza. With that note, uh, we thank all. We end here and thank you very much from Mount Sinai Cat Lab. Cat Lab with the case number one. Second case will start now. <laughs>